gives this woman to marry this man? Her mother and I. Let's bow forward to prayer, please. Father, we thank you for the wonderful occasion that brought these two beautiful families together. We thank you for the love that started with you and that you gave to this wonderful couple. Bless the occasion. May it be all that they've ever dreamed it would be. Thank you for loving us, letting us love you back. We ask it in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Catch up. Well, it's good to see all of you today. We had a little bit of a change in our uh, plans just a little while ago. We had a thunderstorm that came through, and so uh, we are tight and close today. And uh, we're, we're honored that you're here today, and uh, we thank you so much uh, for being a part of this day. 363 days ago, I stood in this place, and I as a father had to give your sister away to be married almost one year ago to the date. And here I am standing in this place again. Never in a million years would I have ever thought that not only uh, I would be standing in a place that was just right over there, but I would be uh, giving my second daughter away in that time frame. Of course, there are a lot of things standing here today that I never thought that I would believe that would have happened or experienced or seen in my lifetime. There's been a worldwide virus that has taken over. The wearing of face masks as a norm and social distancing, schools have been closed, churches are empty, vacations have been canceled or delayed. There's been civil unrest, and yet here in the midst of all of the mayhem that this world has dished out, to us all during this year, there is one shining moment as far as our family goes that outshines them all. And it is you two. It is this day. It is this love. And it is this moment in time. So as I do with all of my weddings that I take part in, I want you both for a moment you're not going to have to cast a very far eye, but I want you to, to look for a moment at all of these that are here, these friends and these family members that are gathered here today because they love you, because they care for you, and because they wanted to be a part of this special day. And today I want to share just a few words with you, and I want to address you both, and then I want to address you individually, and then um, I want to talk to you together. And uh, I want to talk to you about the importance of what you're doing. And family and friends, as you all look around, especially as you enter uh, into this area, and as you see behind me, and as you will see when you enter into the place where the reception is, you will notice that there are many clocks in various areas, as well as up here in the front. And these clocks speak of one thing, and that is time. You know, um, the, the book of uh, Ecclesiastes speaks of time. And the Bible says this, that there is a time or a season for everything. And all of us, we understand and we know that especially the, the older that we grow, how valuable time is. As I stand here today, and as I look at this beautiful young woman, and we, we think back of, of the day that when she was born, and we wonder, where did all the time go? Shane and Rita, as you look at this fine man, you can't help but wonder, where did the time go? You must, most, both of you must think exactly the same thing as Shelley and I do. When you think about time, you ask that person who was stuck in traffic and 15 minutes late to the job of a lifetime interview, you ask them how important time was. Or that person who wishes they could have had one more conversation 
with that loved one who has left this world how important time is. And you see, the truth is we all ought to value and treasure time every moment because time stops for no one. Or does it? It would seem that Braden and Molly, that in fact time did stand still for the both of you. You both knew of each other many years ago. You both longed for each other many years ago. You both loved each other years ago. But life and Miles and others got in the way. And we stand here today. It is proof that life went on, but time stood still. Still to the moment that you came back in each other's lives and you picked up where you'd left off. And by the way, I just want you to know that only God does that. Brayden, I want to talk to you for a moment. It is sad to say that until you came back into Molly's life almost a year ago, that I didn't know who you were. Dads sometimes are kept out of the loop when it comes to that. As a matter of fact, if I'd have known that there was a guy up in, in Illinois and we were living in Tennessee, Molly might not have had as many trips to Illinois. I thought she was just going to see Carl. But I remember the first time that I met you. Do you remember where we were? Bob Evans. Bob Evans. And you walked in and you called me Dad. And I thought, this guy is like Eddie Haskell. If y'all know who Eddie Haskell is, there is something about him, there's something fishy, there's something odd. You were polite, you were nice on the outside, but I figured there had to be something, some quirk, some blemish, some issue. But every time you've walked into my life and talked to me and seen me, I, I can't help but think of Buddy the Elf. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one, right? But over the last almost year, I've watched you grow, grow as a person. I've watched you grow as a follower of Christ. I've watched you grow in your love for my Molly. The way you talk to her, the way you compliment her is unlike I've ever seen. And over these last several months when y'all have lived apart and the phone calls and the messages and video chats that y'all have done and the conversations that Molly would have and you would be on the other line, it was just amazing to me. You'd look at Molly on the phone and say, Molly, how you doing? Molly said, well, I got pimples. And this is what you would say. You would say, I like pimples when they're on you. Molly would say, I'm so tired. I would like to be tired with you. Molly's Molly sitting there eating a bowl of ice cream, and, she, and you say, what are you doing? She says, I'm eating ice cream. I'm a chicken nugget. And you say, I like chicken nuggets like you. It's sickening. Absolutely sickening. But at least you're consistent in the sickness, all right? Here's the thing, though. As a father, seeing how you love her and have you, as you compliment her is what makes me happy. And it also, I have a joy in knowing that God sent you her way. But more importantly than seeing then that how you love her is how you love the Lord and how you strive to be a better follower of Christ. And that excites me even more. The Apostle Paul said this, to follow me not because of who I am, but to follow me because who I am following. And as you follow God... I have nothing to worry about you two. I had the privilege of baptizing you as you stepped out to share with others that you are His child. I had the privilege of not only hearing, but seeing your faith grow and your Bible studies that you have with other men and your devotion times. And I've witnessed you on your own and candid conversations that we've had and many sermons that you've had from Miss Shelley. Many sermons that you've had from her. We've talked about all kinds of things, about living life to the fullest, and how it only comes from putting God first and the importance of leading Molly in the ways of the Lord. I want you to know as you stand here today that Shelly and I are honored. We are so honored to have you to be a part of our family. And we count it a huge blessing to have another godly man marry one of our daughters. And we are thankful for that. Molly, one of my favorite pictures from you was just taken about a year ago. 
And it was at your sister's wedding almost a year ago to this date. And as I said a minute ago, we were right over there across that bridge. And I remember the look on your face that you had as you stood there in awe. And you know which picture I'm talking about. As you stood in awe and you watched your sister and you watched her get married. And here you are today with that exact same look. The only difference today is last year you were looking at me. This year you're looking at him. I remember the day you were born. Were you a boy? Were you a girl? At first we just thought we had gave birth to a head. You had the biggest head. It was round, it was bald. The first cry that you had made quickly turn to silence as they rushed you off. Because you had decided to poop before you were born. And you breathed all that stuff in. Now you've not had a poopy mouth since that time. But that might be the only time in life that you have been quiet for that long. I was thinking about that moment and uh, I, I wrote a song. Do you want me to sing it? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I just happen to have it in my pocket. I thought you were going to pull out a microphone. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to do that. He's a cute devil mic. He's good. Um... For, the, for you know, Molly, that uh, I have a nickname for your sister. Your sister's nickname is Mimi. Yeah. Because she had a friend that couldn't say Emily, so she, we called her Mimi. But my nickname for, for you has been Moo Moo. As a matter of fact, this letter that you gave me today, you signed it. Love your Moo Moo. And I wrote you a little song. And I'm not a singer. <laughs> There are some musicians here, but I'm not a singer and I'm not trying to take anybody's job. But here it goes. You are my moo moo. You first ate doo doo. The very first time that I saw you, I never knew how much I'd love you. Today I'm giving my moo moo away. You are my moo moo. We didn't know what to do. Your head was so big and body small. We prayed long that your body would catch up. And I couldn't find anything to rhyme with that part. So today I'm giving my Moo Moo away. You are my Moo Moo. You don't know Kung Fu. But you don't have to, and here is why. I'll always protect you and look out for you. Even though there's another guy. So you're my Moo Moo. And I love you. And I'm honored to be a part of this day. You have a zeal for life. Even the smallest things excite you to where you want to tell us about it over and over and over again. You've been a huge blessing to our family, huger than the head that you were born with. You lit up our lives when you were born and you've done nothing but that since that day. But you've not only blessed us, but you've blessed the lives of people that you know. It has been a joy to be your parent. It has been a joy to watch you walk in the ways of the Lord and grow into the young Christian woman that you are today. The calling on your life that you have to teach children, no one in their right mind would do that for all the work and the headache and the pay if it wasn't for a calling. And that's a calling. And here you today, here you are today answering another call, a call to be a wife. You, like your sister, are so valuable and you are so precious to me and your mother. And the only reason why anyone would ever give up of something of great value is because it is for a greater cause. And that cause is to follow God and to follow your new husband that God has given you. I love you. And I'm blessed to be a part of this day. I guess we need to get on with the ceremonial stuff. But I do want to speak to you both about the importance of today. And although this day is a great day, and it's one that you will all think about throughout your lifetime together, everything from this day will be built upon this day. I also want you to know that this day will not mean as much in life over time if you ever forget about the one who made it all possible, and that is God. God has brought you together. And as we're talking about timing... It was God's timing that separated you, but it was also God's, God His divine plan and His timing that brought you back to this place where we are today. He's the one that has done this. 
And in and through all this crazy mess that this world seems to be in, here you both stand on this day. You both must never forget that. You too will become one flesh as it states in Mark chapter 10. And I share this in every wedding that I do. From this day forward, when God looks at you, Brayden, He sees Molly. And from this day forward, Molly, when God looks at you, He sees Brayden. And the most important thing is, Brayden, when you look at Molly, that you see God. And Molly, when you look at Brayden, that you see God. Because God must be the center of your marriage. And pleasing Him should be a priority for the both of you. And I promise, I promise that as long as you both live to please God, you will be pleasing each other. And He is the glue to your relationship. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, that he that finds a good thing, he that finds a wife finds a good thing. And Brayden, I want you to know that you found a great thing when you found Molly. Never forget that. She's not great because she is my child. She is great because she's his child. She is valuable and precious. And if you treat her that way, God will honor you and bless you for it. Molly, the Bible says, or Paul in the book of Romans says this, that you are to be devoted to one another. That you are to honor one another above yourselves. And that word devoted means to be faithful and loyal. And I want you to know that Braden will need your devotion. He will need your loyalty. And other than God, as a man, there is nothing greater than having a wife by your side. A wife to know and how you feel when things are crumbling around you and when the battle of life and times get weary, that you will support his arms just like Aaron supported the arms of Moses. And loyalty to one another will make you stronger as a marriage couple. And so let's go on with the vows. The dictionary defines vows as this. It is a solemn promise or a pledge or a commitment. And when you agree to the vows, remember all those friends that you looked at just a few moments ago. All those family members that were sitting there, you were making these vows in front of them. But most importantly, you are making them in front of God. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5, that it is better to, to not make a vow than to make one and to break it. And so, Brayden, let me ask you, do you take Molly to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you promise to lead her in the ways of the Lord, to love God first and to love Molly second? Do you promise to honor her and to serve her and to care for her when things are well and even when things are not? Do you promise to be loyal to her and fight for her in the midst of danger and long for her when she is away? If you do, so signify by saying, I do. I do. And Molly, do you take Braden to be your lawfully wedded husband? Do you promise to follow his lead as he follows God? Do you promise to love God first and Braden second? Do you promise to honor him and serve him and care for him when things are well and even when things are not? Do you promise to be loyal to Him and fight for Him in the midst of danger and long for Him when He is away? If you do, so signify by saying, I do. I do. Can I have the rings? If you'll notice, the rings are a symbol of marriage and they are to be worn for all to see that you are committed to another Never take them for granted. They are a constant reminder of what has taken place here today in the love and the bond and the covenant made between you two and God. And so, Braden, as you place the ring on her finger, repeat these words after me. According to the vows between us made. According to the vows. Between Don't look at me. I'm already married. Talk to her. I forgot what you said already. According to the vows between us made. According to the vows between us made. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Molly, as you place the ring on Braden's finger, would you repeat these words after me? According to the vows between us made. According to the vows between us made. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I got Go. Go. <laughs> Braden and Molly will be lighting a unity candle. And that unity candle will signify that although they are both individuals, they are also both now today, in God's eyes, united in one.
They're going to take the time to do that right now. Brayden and Molly, would you like to sing You Light Up My Life? Yeah. All right. Light up the room before we lit that candle. That's right. It is my privilege to state to you, by the powers that are given to me by this great state of Tennessee and my Heavenly Father, that I now pronounce you husband and wife, and Brayden, you may kiss your bride.